So now let's look at an example problem. The rectangular plate is deformed into the shape shown by the dashed lines. Determine the average normal strain along diagonal AC and the average shear strain at corner A relative to the X and Y axes. We're also given a picture of the rectangular plate with all the dimensions of both the original and deformed measurements. Before we begin solving for anything, let's use the given find solution format to determine what information we're given and what we need to solve for. In this case though, it's actually much easier to use a free body diagram to display all of our givens since the measurements are better understood in context. We need to find the average normal strain along the diagonal of, of the rectangle from point A to C, as well as the shear strain at point A with respect to the X and Y axes. Our first step is to draw the free body diagram of the plate. And here's that. You can see that the original plate is shown in the pale blue color, while the now deformed plate is shown in the sky blue color. So let's start by finding the normal strain. Remember, the formula for that was new length minus original length all over original length. In this case, I used L sub AC as the new length and L sub AC sub zero as the original length. Let's bring back the free body diagram from the last slide. We've added a couple of things to it though, and we can go over each part step by step. Check out the yellow diagonal on the free body diagram. That runs across point A to point C, and that'll be our original length. Instead of calling it L sub AC sub zero, we'll just call that L sub zero for short. We can find the length of that diagonal by using the Pythagorean theorem, where C equals the root of A squared plus B squared. A squared in this case will be the length of side AB squared, and B squared will be the length of side AD squared. We don't really need that equation though, since it's just a 3, 4, 5 triangle. The hypotenuse of a 3, 4, 5 triangle is 5, and since the millimeters are all expressed to the hundreds, L sub 0 is going to be 500 millimeters squared. Then we have L sub AC, which we'll just call L for short. That one's a little trickier, but it's actually going to use the same process. We need to find the new length of the diagonal once the rectangle is deformed. In this case, the diagonal gets longer, so we know L will be a bigger number than 500. Check out the purple diagonal on the free body diagram. That runs from point A to point E and that'll be our new length. I should mention that point E isn't actually a point on the original picture, but I just added it in the free body diagram so you know where the new corner is. We can find the length of that diagonal by using the Pythagorean theorem again, but this time we need to account for the stretch in the x and y directions. Think about why we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Even though the deformation doesn't create a right triangle, we can imagine that it does. We'll just need to account for the additional lengths. Let's think about what L sub AC is. Technically, it's actually L sub AE now, since the new diagonal runs from point A to point E. So that means to use the Pythagorean theorem, we need to create a right triangle where A squared is the horizontal distance from A to E, and B squared is the vertical distance from A to E. So how much was the rectangle stretched in the X direction? Let's break that down into two values. We already know the horizontal distance from point A to B, which is 400 millimeters. To that, we'll add the horizontal distance from B to E, which we'll call X sub BE. That's 6 millimeters. And how much was the rectangle stretched in the Y direction? Again, we'll break it into two. 
We already know the vertical distance from point A to D, which is 300 millimeters. To that, we'll add the vertical distance from D to E, which we'll call Y sub DE. That's six millimeters too. This is a side note. Points A, B, C, and D are all representative of the original rectangle. So they represent the corners of the pale blue rectangle. We'll plug all of that into the Pythagorean theorem equation where a squared is now L sub AB plus X sub BE. That's the total horizontal distance between points A and E. And then we'll add that to L sub AD plus Y sub DE, which is B squared. And that's the total vertical distance between points A and E. We'll square both of those quantities to produce the new deformed length of L sub AC, and that'll be 508.4 millimeters. We can finally bring back the normal strain equation and plug in both the original length and new length values. After we do some simple algebra, we'll find that the average normal strain along diagonal AC is 0 0.0168 millimeters per millimeter. Now let's solve for the average shear strain at point A. Remember that the shear strain is when we have two perpendicular line segments that undergo a change in the angle between them. The formula for shear strain is the original angle between the two segments minus the new angle. Since the segments are originally perpendicular, we have pi over 2 in the equation, and the new angle is represented by alpha. You can see in the free body diagram that alpha is the angle between the dashed lines at corner A. Solving for alpha directly here is much more complicated because the dashed lines don't form any type of distinct quadrilateral, so it'll be difficult to use trigonometry. In cases like this, solving for the deformed angle is not always the most efficient method to solve for shear strain. Let's try another way. I just want to reiterate that shear strain is essentially just finding the change in the angle. Instead of solving for the new angle, let's just solve for the angles that are left out. Check out the free body diagram to see what I mean. Beta 1 and beta 2 are the angles that are left out when the plate is deformed. The sum of these two values represent the change in the angle measure when corner A goes from a right angle to the acute angle alpha. Beta 1 and beta 2 are much easier to solve for because they're both essentially just small triangles that we can use trigonometry for. If you watch the key concept video for strain, you know that when we have very small angles like beta 1 and beta 2, we can use small strain analysis. I'll work with beta 1 first. I isolated the angle so we can look at it more closely. We have the lengths of the opposite and adjacent sides to beta 1, so we can use tangent for our small strain analysis. The opposite side is 2 millimeters long, and the adjacent side is 403 millimeters long. Now we'll isolate beta 2. We can use tangent again since we have the lengths of the opposite and adjacent sides. This time, the opposite side is 2 millimeters long, and the adjacent side is 302 millimeters long. We can add beta 1 and beta 2 together to get the average shear strain at corner A, which is 0 0.0116 radians. Perfect! I hope this two-part lecture and example series helped bridge the gap in your understanding of strain. As always, if you have any questions about what we went over, feel free to ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching!